Today, we're gonna take a closer look at my favorite industry, my favorite topic, the semiconductor market. Uh, there are some reports that kind of explain to us if the, is there really a slowdown in this space right now? And one of the best players to kind of take a closer look at is TSM, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing. This is the company that Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway's has recently invested roughly $4 billion, if I remember correctly, and has really, I wanna say, put the semiconductor market in the kind of the spotlight for investing uh so again i talk about this topic almost on a daily basis so i hope you guys enjoy today's episode let's get started i do want to thank the motley fool for sponsoring this video and make sure to check out fool.com slash jose to get the top 10 stocks to buy right now all right so first let's start off with tsmc the company recently reported their november 2022 revenue report uh and they do this on a monthly basis right if you guys know about tsm this is the huge manufacturing of semiconductor chips. Big companies like NVIDIA, like Apple, like AMD use TSM to kind of build their chips to use for their products. And they are by far the leader with over 50% of the market share. We are going to take a closer look at the new market share update in a bit. But we can see for November of 2022, they did see a few things. First, month over month increase of 5.9% and year over year increase of 50.2%. We can see year to date, which is January to November of 2022, it's up 44.6% versus January to November of 2021. So I wanna say overall looking at this number, we could say, hey, there's not really much of a slowdown happening here in the semiconductor market, especially if November, right? November of market of month, which was supposed to be very, very heavy with inventory correction, did not see much of that, right? So in one side, we are seeing a bullish case here for TSM. I do want to say I am an owner of TSM. This is definitely a very, very popular company. In my opinion, I haven't really been purchasing any more shares, not for any negative reasons, but I do believe TSM, I'd rather buy more of a semiconductor overall market ETF, a semiconductor ETF, right? Instead of investing in TSM, because I believe the returns to some extent may be very, very similar. Obviously, TSM definitely has the potential to outperform. And I'm willing to take that risk, um, but still mitigating maybe some of my diversification by going the ETF route. Some other great things about TSM, like I mentioned, it is being backed up by Warren Buffett's um, Berkshire Hathaways. We also have a strong dividend yield of roughly 2.9% at current prices. And this is a market shareholder leader in this space, right? Number one, with over 50% of the market share, where number two doesn't even have 20% of the market. So we can see huge, huge optionality and huge leadership in this company. Now, I, I want to take a closer look at maybe some of the bearish things happening that uh, we saw from TrendForce on December 8th of 2022. So about four days ago, TrendForce released the information of total revenue for the global foundry business. But before we take a closer look at this TrendForce article, make sure to hit the thumbs up as it does help me grow my overall audience. If you want to support a little bit more, make sure to subscribe using my link at fool.com slash jose. Finally, if you are here, it means you are a semiconductor investor or are curious in this space. I have a weekly podcast, great episodes, great co-hosts. Make sure to check that out. The link is above. It's a brand new channel. with So make sure to subscribe. Appreciate it. They did see that it did grow 6% quarter over quarter for the third quarter of 2022. But they expect foundry revenue to see some form of correction in the fourth quarter of 2022 to be two reasons, either seeing more of a flat line in the revenue or some form of downgrade in revenue growth. We can see they mentioned as a result, peak season demand in the second half of the year has been underwhelming and inventory consumption is proceeding slower than anticipated. This situation has led to substantial downward corrections to foundry orders as well for fourth quarter of 2022. Now, Transport Force cast the total revenue of the global top 10 foundries will register a quarter over quarter decline. Here, if we take a closer look, we can see that um, the top 10 foundries by revenue, TSMC, the company we were just talking about, is number one with 56.1% of market share this most recent quarter. Number two is Samsung with 15.5%. You can see a huge lead there. We can see how the lead continues to grow. Number three is 6.9%. Number four is a very popular one. One I think we talked about, Global Foundries with 
0.8%. So like I mentioned earlier, Trendforce does believe that for the fourth quarter of 2022, we might see a bit of a slowdown near in the kind of foundry business. We can see number four, Global Foundries, they estimate that it will not be able to maintain its capacity utilization rate as it has not secured enough long-term agreements for eight-inch wafer foundries. Uh, so this is one thing a lot of kind of foundry businesses were trying to do, kind of secure these long-term contracts where they will have more of a visual or expected revenue source for the upcoming years. It seems global foundries in forms of trend force did not get that kind of uh, long-term security that they were kind of looking for. They do believe that TSMC's revenue for fourth quarter will not register a quarter over quarter decline, but it will likely be most likely flat compared with third quarter of 2022. And I do believe in third quarter of 2022, we did see some strong revenue growth numbers. Um, so even a flat line, in my opinion, is not the worst case. We have seen that the stock has taken quite a hit. Let me take a closer look at the chart right here to date. The stock is down roughly 38.25%, already expecting the worst. And if right now the worst at the moment is just a flat line after a huge growth this most recent quarter, and we saw November numbers were up dramatically, I don't think it's horrible news for the semiconductor market. I do believe in my opinion, as we're seeing it right now, obviously things can get a lot worse. But right now, the semiconductor market has definitely gotten hit with overblownness fear. Uh, in my opinion, I think there's too too much fear in the semiconductor industry. Even if the consumer market continues to be weak, there are obviously numerous tailwinds in this space, like data centers, uh, like just clouding, artificial intelligence, autonomous machine learning, aerospace and defense. The list goes on and on. So while there might be pocket of weakness and some of these pockets might be big, like the consumer space, and they might affect kind of revenue in a quarter or two, I do believe for those long-term investors, these opportunities for the semiconductors market, in my opinion, for me, is very welcoming, right? I, I enjoy pur purchasing the semiconductor spaces at these prices so I can have some great um, returns in the long term of things. So I do believe it always depends on kind of what time of time set you have for your investments. If you are more of like a short term investment, maybe a year or two, I don't know if the semiconductor market is the market for one. But for those with multiple five year time frame, which are able to also kind of withstand the volatility we are seeing in this market, it's definitely one to keep a closer eye on. So take care. Have a good day and see you next time.